Hey everybody, this is Gregory from Dappy Diversity. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you how to build a dapp without MetaMask. All right, so before we get into that, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below. And as always, if you wanna learn how to become a highly paid blockchain developer, you need to join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's talk about how to build a dApp without MetaMask, all right? So what do I mean by that, right? So MetaMask, if you're not familiar, is, you know, the Ethereum wallet. It's very popular for Chrome, right? So if you're using dApp, something like CryptoKitties, for example, you know, you could go to their website and interact with it, you know, interact with smart contracts with your own Ethereum wallet in a decentralized way um, with MetaMask, right? It's a browser extension that allows you to, like, you know, interact with smart contracts and sign transactions, all that kind of stuff, straight from your browser, right? Basically turns your... Um, it basically turns your current web browser into a blockchain web browser, if that makes sense, okay? So if what if you wanna build a dApp or some sort of application that interacts with the blockchain and not have your users install MetaMask, right? So that's kind of the question I'm answering today, give you at least one strategy on how to do that, okay? So there's lots of different ways to do it. Um, some more complex than others uh, with different kinds of trade-offs, right? Um, but I'm gonna tell you how you can get started building one today, all right? Well, basically, you know, in order to, create transactions on the blockchain anytime you want to, you know, do something essentially like, you know, interact with a smart contract and, you know, send some ether or send any kind of cryptocurrency or do anything on the blockchain where you're changing the blockchain, right? You're you're doing something with it. It costs money. It costs gas in the form of ether, you know, Ethereum's native cryptocurrency. If you're just reading information from the blockchain like how much, you know, ether does this person have in their wallet? How much money does this person have? You know, what's the goal for this ICO? That's always free. It always has been, right? But if you want to contribute to an ICO or you want to, you know, uh, do something with a smart contract, it always costs money, okay? So the user normally pays this cost, right? Whenever they sign the transaction, basically they're saying, uh, yes, I'm going to, um, you know, pay this transaction fee, right? So there's a couple different ways to do this. You can either pay the uh, transaction on behalf of the user, right? Or you can have like the user fund their own account to use your application or something like that. It just depends on what your users are willing to do. It depends on the use case of your application, all kinds of stuff, right? But I'm gonna give you the tools that you need um, to experiment with that and kind of decide for yourself and yeah, build something yourself, build your own dApp without MetaMask, right? So this is kind of a continuation of the series that I've been doing uh, on Python, right? Web3, the Python version. I'm gonna show you how to use the tools inside of Web3 uh, to do this, all right? So if you haven't seen some of those previous videos, I highly recommend checking them out. Um, if you haven't already, you can probably just jump into this one to get a high level understanding, but I'm probably gonna refer to some concepts that I cut from those other videos if you haven't seen those already. So head on over to uh, web3py.readthedocs.io uh, um, for this documentation, and also make sure that you have you know Python installed in your computer, um, that you have Web3 installed uh, with Python on your computer. I go over all that in some of those previous videos, so check those out if you haven't already, okay? So in order to, you know, build a dApp without MetaMask, you're gonna have to control the user's account in some way, okay? And I just made a video on uh, how to build an Ethereum wallet with JavaScript where I show you how to create accounts, you know, with Web3.js, right? But I'm gonna show you how to do this with Web3, you know, the Python version. And it's gonna work a little bit differently. I'm gonna kind of call out some of the differences and, you know, how you might do this, right? So mostly you're gonna be using Python, like, you know, with a server-side application probably for something like this, okay? So I'm gonna talk about this in the context of a web server. So you might be doing this inside of something like Flask or Django. Those are both, you know, frameworks for building Python uh, backends, okay? So go check out Python and Django, uh, sorry, uh, Flask and Django, if you're not familiar with those, okay? So, but inside of those, you know, you can use this Web3 library that's built for Python, okay? So the first thing you want to do is kind of create an account for the user. And you can do that like this. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the Python uh uh, console here. I'm going to say from web3, uh, import web3. All right. And now I want to uh, get a URL for an Ethereum node. All right. And I'm just going to do this with Infura. Go check out those other videos where I show you how to get your own Infura URL. You're going to put your own API key here. Right. But I'm going to actually use uh, one from my account. Um, I guess, you know, <laughs> People have already been using this in my last video, so it's probably not a big deal if you use it, but just a warning, it might break on you if too many people use it. 
All right, so store your inferior URL and you're going to uh, want to create a new Web3 instance like this. Uh, Web3 equals you know Web3 and then use an HTTP provider, right? And pass in your uh, Ethereum node connection. This is your inferior URL. So you can just pause the video and make sure you have this code, all right? So now we have uh, a Web3 instance, okay? So I can create a new account like this, Web3 uh, ETH account dot create. All right, and that returns a new account. I'm gonna save it like this. All right, so this account's got a couple different properties. You know, it's got a, a an address, a, you know, public key, a private key. So let's, let's look at account. I'm gonna hit uh, period and then tab to see what it responds to. Okay, so address, all right, uh, account, private key, all right, so Go ahead and uh, I'm going to warn you that you should not use this account at all because everyone who's watching this video has seen this private key. And anyone, you know, who has seen this, you know, could potentially hack your account and steal any funds that you have stored in here. So don't use this account at all uh, on the mainnet. All right. So that kind of brings me to my next point. This is how you create an account for your user that you're going to store on your server, but you should never, ever store this on a server, right? Um that would be very bad, right? Here's why. Basically, anyone who, you know, found this, whether it's in a database or in a file somewhere, whatever, has instant access to this person's account and can steal their funds, right? So what you want to do is actually store an encrypted version of this uh, on your server, like, and you do that like this. So basically, um, you can say account, uh, I'll say like Web3 ETH account. Well, actually, let's just do it this way. Um, Account.encrypt. All right. Let's say uh, key store. Key store equals, let's see, actually that didn't work. Oh, it needs a password. So basically, uh, we're going to encrypt the account and we're going to pass it in a password like this. I'll just say foobar. All right. So let's look at the key store that's returned. All right, so what is this? This is a JSON key store. And basically, this is an encrypted version of the account. You can go to the Web3 documentation and look at this. They even talk about you know, how to store uh, private keys. Right? So if you go to the documentation and then uh, go down to the section where it says working with local private keys, they talk about you know, uh, some common use cases and then you know, how to... Um, how to do it basically, right? So they're doing it with a geth file, right? But what I'm doing is basically just generating something very similar where I'm uh, creating a JSON key store that is an encrypted version of your account that can be decrypted with the password. So if you're going to do this, um, I highly recommend that you, you know, ask your users for a password for their application and you store that password as an encrypted password in the database, right? And that whenever you do this, you expose it uh, to the user to where they can decrypt it. Um, you can do this even in tandem with Web3.js where you expose this key store or something and then they you know, accept their password uh, on the client side or something like that. Basically, um, you should never be passing private keys around. You should never be exposing private keys. You should always be working something like this and always decrypt the... Uh, decrypt the account with this password just like that, okay? You can store this in a database, you can store it in a file somewhere. Um, that's a way to do it, right? So once you've got the account on behalf of the user, you know, it needs to be funded. So you could send some ether to this. You could have a, a treasury account. You could have a machine account or something like that uh, that actually, um, you know, you, you know, you can do this a lot of different ways. So basically the next thing that you want to do is sign transactions on the behalf of the user. So basically you can say uh, account. Um, actually, let's do it this way. We need to decrypt the account first. So let's go to um, Web3 ETH account decrypt. Decrypt. And we'll say um, pass in the key store and then the password. All right, so you basically you need the key store file, which is this JSON object right here, and you need the password. So that's what I've passed in here. Hit enter. And here is um, your private key, right, uh, of the account, okay? So that's going to be how you can sign transactions and get the account back from uh, this decrypt function like that. All right, and that restores it to the original state where you can sign any transactions and you can generate the public key from this private key. Basically, this private key is all that you need in order to get the account back to the original state, okay? 
So um, if you go to account, right, and you see this, um, once it's back in this original state, you can say account dot, uh, let's just look at everything it responds to. Uh, we can, you know, sign transaction. And that's essentially what you'd want to do anytime that you were um, going to, you know, do transactions on behalf of your users on a back end or something like that. Check out my other videos where I show you how to build transactions and sign them. I'll just pull up actually some code examples because uh, I have it open here. Um, let's just say I'm going to pull this up right here. So this is actually uh, code examples from some of my previous videos where uh, I'm showing you how to, you know, do this with the greeter contract. So basically, you would load the smart contract, um, you would build the transaction hash, and then you would uh, basically, you know, just send it. And you could sign this transaction with uh, the account that you just generated in this example, right? And that's going to allow you to uh, allow your users to basically interact with smart contracts, do other kinds of stuff that DApps would do um, without requiring them to use MetaMask. And that would, you know, ease a lot of friction um, for them to, you know, becoming a user of the blockchain and a user of your DApp. They wouldn't have to uh, necessarily buy Ether. Like, you know, you could have a pretty convoluted process. So, so there's like a few strategies in this, right? Like you could uh, basically either... Um, allow, you know, not, not make them pay for anything. And that would ev reduce even more friction. Um, you just have to have a way you'd have to have an application use case where them using your application, um, would basically cover the cost of them building the transactions. And that can sometimes be tricky and challenging depending on the price of ether where we're at with market cycles, all that kind of stuff. So there's lots of different ways to handle this. All right. So I would say just get creative. Um, if you have a use case that you think uh, is viable for this kind of thing, by all means, here are the tools for you to explore that, right? And there's some other options. You know, you can work with um, nodes. You can work with, uh, you don't have to use local private keys on a server, right? You can have a node. There's lots of other ways to do this. I'm just presenting you with one uh, viable way, okay? All right, so I hope you all like this video. Again, check out those previous videos in this Web3 series for Python in order to, uh, you know, understand everything you need uh, to do this. And as always, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the like button down below. And if you're interested in becoming a highly paid blockchain developer, you need to join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.